So that we've talked about, you know, what is a normal PSA, we've talked about PSA density. Can you talk about PSA velocity or doubling time? Right, so in the early years, when PSA was all we had, and we're talking about back in the 1990s, uh, they, we didn't have these fancy scans, we didn't have OPCO, we didn't have select MDX. And so there were attempts made to look at how fast the PSA is changing. It makes sense, because if there was a bad cancer, you'd figure it's growing faster, the PSA would be rising more quickly. And that might be a good indication as to whether there's a bad cancer behind all this PSA uh, activity. Turned out that it didn't work very well. It sounds great on paper, but the problem is there's so many other reasons that PSA jumps around that uh, rapid rises in PSA were oftentimes occurring for, from prostatitis. So someone could have cancer and prostatitis, or they could have cancer and uh, you know, uh, nonspecific inflammation or lab variations. And they're just wasn't any added precision in the decision-making process. Now, PSA doubling time is useful for men that have had previous therapy where the prostate's sort of been taken out of the picture. They've had previous radiation, previous surgery, and then uh, men that have cancer coming back after treatment, they look at the PSA doubling time to try and gauge how serious the cancer is, and the PSA doubling time is very useful in that situation, or the PSA velocity. PSA velocity and doubling time are essentially the same thing, but they use a different equation used to provide the calculation. But the whole idea is the rate of change over time, and as we all would understand intuitively, a rapid change over time is uh, bespeaks of a more aggressive cancer. A very indolent, slow change over time is describing for us a low-grade process. Sometimes it could be watched. So we have to make a distinction. Are we talking about PSA screening in someone that's never had treatment, or are we talking about uh, evaluating the aggressiveness of a relapse cancer? And, uh, and uh, so the doubling time has application in relapse cancer. It doesn't really have application in men that are on a screening protocol. Seems like it should, but it's been carefully researched and it really doesn't add much, it doesn't add any useful information. Um, PSA doubling times, are also used in very advanced cancers, people that are hormone resistant, and uh, as you would imagine in that setting, also rapid rises are more serious and portend greater problems than people that have a slow uh, rise. And for people who want to calculate the PSA doubling time, they're just counting how much their PSA is doubling within a certain time frame, and that's the number that they would walk into, correct? Yeah, let's, let's talk about the doubling. I don't use the velocity as much that was used, uh, and then as I pointed out, it wasn't practical, it's been more or less abandoned. But doubling's pretty easy to calculate um, if you have a, just a little bit of capacity with numbers. Uh, if you take, uh, say it's in June and your uh, PSA is six, and then in July it's 12, right. then it's doubled in a month. So I, you just work backwards from the uh, most recent PSA. So let's say you're looking at a sequence of numbers. Let's say it's in June and it's six, and you go back to March and it's three then that's one doubling, three months, it's a three month doubling time. So it's not really difficult to uh, estimate. Now, if you're looking at relapse cancers, what is a serious PSA doubling time? Just to give you all a context, uh, the, um, well, let's talk about what isn't a serious doubling time because it's nice to know that men that have doubling times that require more than a year, men with relapse disease, they've had previous surgery or radiation, the cancer's coming back, uh, and the doubling time is greater than a year, those people have uh, excellent long-term prognosis. Their survival is similar to other people that don't even have prostate cancer. Mm. Uh, so then work down, uh, once you get under, say, eight to nine months, it starts to become a significant problem. And then, of course, people that have doubling times that are in the one to three month range have very aggressive cancers. Yeah, and thank you so much for making those distinctions. I think that some patients have, in conversations I've found, often think that if it's not in the screening situation and trying to figure out what's going on there, they don't realize that doubling time has so much importance when it comes to treatment. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions you would like us to ask our prostate cancer experts, uh, you can go ahead and email us at info at pcri.org. And we have a ton of information on our website as well, so go ahead and visit that. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. This helps other prostate cancer patients learn about our channel on the YouTube platform. We hope you have a great week.